Good afternoon. Welcome to That Oregon Life. We are in Cottage Grove, and this is Pacific Yurts. Um, this is where it all started. Uh, yurts are kind of a big movement in the, in the world, actually in the country too, and especially here in Oregon. And uh, the modern day yurt was found right here in Cottage Grove, Oregon. Right there is where the wood manufacturing is done. We are off the highway, so I have to talk a little loud. But you guys, I don't know if you've ever been in a yurt before, but we're gonna take you in some yurts that you've probably never seen before. <laughs> this is this is a whole different world. This is Pete. So Pete, what do you do at the company? I'm the customer service manager here. So we're gonna meet the, the owner, Alan, in just a minute, but Pete and I, we're gonna kinda walk over here and talk. What do, the, the yurt has really changed, hasn't it? It's changed quite a bit, yeah. From the traditional structure in Mongolia to what we see today, long evolution. And what are people looking for? Who, who's buying these? We have anything from government officials using it for uh, revenue producers or people using it as a transitional housing. Um, sometimes it's a hot tub enclosure or even a, a backyard studio. I've, I've seen yoga studios like this. Yes. A lot of uh, little uh, workout things in people's backyards. Hey, Jim, how are Ja? How are you? Love your room without corners. There you go. <laughs> and everyone comes with a vaulted ceiling. Every single one. I think that's super important because sometimes you get into like one of those tiny houses, and it feels like you know, 100 square Closed feet. In, yeah. yeah, and when you get into one of these. Now, we are gonna take you inside. Alan um, is the founder of the company, Alan Barrett. My wife are inside one of these, but we're gonna take you one. This is probably like a yurt no one has seen very much of. It's pretty comfortable in there. Yeah, this is like, if you're gonna go camping. So you guys actually have the state parks. How many are in the state parks around Oregon? In Oregon alone, there's almost 200. 200 of your yurts. Yeah. And, and then they're all over the world. And we're all gonna show you some pictures of that too. So come on in here, Pete, let's go in here. Well, I'm gonna turn this around you guys so you can here. Hold on, I'm gonna turn. Okay, all right, let's go right in here. So this is the yurt, not of the future, but this is the yurt now. So look at this, you've got a full kitchen. Oh my gosh, there's that vaulted ceiling we're talking about. Every year it comes with a vaulted ceiling, right, Alan? Absolutely. <laughs> and here's the rest. I'm gonna take you around real fast before we meet Alan. Little fireplace. Check out this, we got a bathroom. Oh man, look at that. Full bath, shower, right here. Walls, look at this. If we could afford it, we would be living in one for sure. Well, how do you know you can't afford it, Chris? God, that's what this is, feels like. So this is the big one, right? Yeah, this is the 30-footer. Okay, and that's my wife, Kathy. Just wave, hon. Hello. And Alan, come over here, because I don't want a window in your background. Okay. And how you can come over, okay. You guys, really fast, because I'm into history, and we're in Cottage Grove, and Cottage Grove is a town about history. So really quickly, how did you get the idea for the yurt? This was 40 years ago that they came up with this. Well, let's see. Um, I originally saw an article on yurts in uh, National Geographic magazine, and the uh, yurt was in Mongolia, and I just loved the architectural space. And then I uh, had a job as a tree planter and wound up uh, building one out on the contract and then living in it while we built our home. So you guys, this is where the yurt idea comes from. In Mongolia, this is how they lived. Wow, that's immense. How much does it cost? <laughs> Everybody wants to know how much does a yurt cost? How much does a yurt cost? What are they? What's a basic yurt? Well, it depends too because it depends on the sizes, size. Yeah. Right? So you have 16, uh, 12, 14, 16, 20, 24, and 30. So this yurt, the 30 footer, over 700 square feet, costs oh I don't know, about um, it starts at about 11,000. 11,000, and then there's options like insulation, French doors, extra windows. We even have a new thermal glass window now, uh, very energy efficient. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. Yeah. So what? who is using these? Who's buying these? Well, uh, we very diverse clientele. Um, commercial, uh, as in commercial campgrounds, uh, glamping resorts, uh, and the like. And then private individuals using them for studios, art studios, uh, you know, vacation retreats. And then um, the other market is the government. Like Oregon State Parks has close to 200, and most of the other state parks in other states have yurts as well now. It's a growing trend.
So you see, Kathy, you've seen these on Airbnb, right? Yeah, I've seen them. Um, it's the glamping kind of thing, and it, it's very intriguing. I mean, I look at them, and I'm like, oh, I want to go. And, you know, they're beautiful and luxury, but I've never been in one like this. This is amazing. It is a home. I mean, I get it. It's not just your camp your, your, that you see at the campgrounds, which is what I've always thought of them, but this is like... This is a house. It's gorgeous. <laughs> so, here, you guys, I want to show you really quick some pictures. So, check this out. This is in a, a calendar. Maybe and I'm gonna... you can tell us yeah, the Alan, kind of tell us where we are here. Well, this one is in uh, backcountry in Colorado, up in the snow. It's and, actually uh, in Idaho. Idaho. <laughs> so, we've an Idaho County County switch. Uh, yeah, that's at uh, Georgia State Parks uh, on a lake there. Sorry, I'm not doing this so well. This is Tree Bones, a really nice resort on the coast of California. Okay. Yeah, just flip through, yeah. Look at look at that, you guys. This is over at Umqua Lighthouse State Park. So you can rent this at the Umqua State Lighthouse for about a hundred bucks a night. Now the difficulty is you gotta get on the list. That's true. You're, They're you're, booked months and months in oh, advance. Oh, yours just broke And those up. are the luxury yurts. They have simpler There's look at this. Yeah. Orca Island, uh, up in uh, Alaska. Okay, tell them about this one. Well, this is an interesting one. Um, tell them about that one, Pete. That's kind Pete, of here. Fun. This uh, is get to get. This one is on a uh, a uh, adventure <laughs> tree canopy tour uh, in Texas, and they actually have this completely supported by a six. Uh, actually, it's sixty feet off the ground, built onto a cypress tree, and you actually have to get to the yurt by way of suspension bridge and they have a private bathroom on the hillside adjacent to the yurt so that whoever's renting that particular yurt uh, has their own private bathroom. Look at that beautiful canopy bed. Yeah. And when it rains, it, uh, we made this custom for them, but the rain comes right down through uh, and out the floor and it stays dry. So what, what should you know um, about yurts of the year 2018 versus 40 years ago when you started this whole thing? Well, um, back in the day, they were a lot simpler. And I think over the years, what we've done is added a lot of really nice options. We've added the French doors. We've added NASA space insulation. We've added structural um, strength uh, via our snow and wind kit so that it uh, actually exceeds structural code for a house uh, and withstands high wind and snow load. And then other luxury options. People obviously can add the kitchenette or, or bathroom in some situations. And then for high snow conditions, we have yurts at um, ski resorts and things like that. So uh, they'll often get um, our uh, upgraded rafter system, even a steel column support for very high snow load. So capacity. you guys get all kinds of awards for your building and, and recognition for how you do this. We have had some nice recognition and uh, we certainly appreciate that. And. Uh, I meant, oh, I want to mention the thermal glass windows. Look at those. Okay, those hold on. Add to the efficiency. So you guys, these all the windows are the double pane thermal glass, like that. So this isn't like the little at the campground where you go um, and you pull the little flap down. Right. You know what we should do? Can you show me the outside? Tell me about the exterior. Yeah. Can you do that, guys? Yeah, guys. So here is. Now, I'm sorry about the car noise, guys, but we're near the freeway. But look. Okay. So this is the key to how this stuff works. Well, this is our standard window, um, and it has clear vinyl frame with Velcro, so you can open it or not. Um, it has screens built in. This is our 15-year warranty uh, top cover, our premium top cover. And then over here, you can see the thermal glass window design, just like you'd have in a house. So and this is not canvas on the top. This is a, a high-technology... Yeah, we call it a vinyl laminated polyester. It's an architectural fabric. The seams are electronically welded, so it won't leak. And our best uh, premium top comes with a 15-year warranty, longer than the roof on some houses. And that's changed the game. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. It's, it's not really a permanent dwelling, and it's not really a tent. It's something in between that is quite unique. But this is going to be way smaller than people doing small houses. I mean, less expensive than people doing small houses and that sort of thing. Absolutely. We call this, this is our 16-foot model. We call it the Hemingway Writing Studio because it's sort of oh. decorated for somebody who might be, you know, writing or 
So this is sick. God, you guys, look at this. Is that not the coolest thing? So you, uh, so that's what ends up happening too. A lot of people put in studios or yoga studios in their backyard, yep. a pottery. Really popular, whatever, you know, for an extra room addition. Your mother-in-law. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your teenagers who need yeah. their own space. <laughs> or parents put their teenagers in it because they need their own space. Exactly. So your dream, like... Uh, 40 years ago, when you were putting this together, you came up with an idea. I mean, you're a true entrepreneur, Alan. That's what I really like about you. And this is Alan Bear, just so you guys know. I don't remember if I introduced him or not. I've known him for a long time. <laughs> Thank um, you. This is, uh, this is like really, you were green before it was popular to be green. You were green when green was a color. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, the early years were a struggle, but over over time, um, we continued to develop new options and innovations. And have customers all over the world now and it's really exciting to see what they're doing with the product and um, and we've got a great crew of people who really care about uh, the quality of the production uh, and also the customer service taking care of the customer after they purchase so when we talk in culture a lot these days about affordable housing mm -hmm. um, I think we have an idea we that this is going to I, I will bet you that this is going to be for the in the future this is going to be a huge thing for a lot of people um, you know what I mean? Just because mm -hmm. it is so affordable and uh, structurally sound, and I think you're gonna—it's gonna make a big dent in things for people. Well, we've been seeing uh, interest growing for 40 years, and um, you know we concentrate on uh, you know the quality here, uh, not mass producing the product. But um, it's just always exciting to see how people are using it, and definitely uh, new people are discovering it all the time. I see them in people's backyards and, and, and uh, people, you know, using them for studios and that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And so when we were talking earlier, so in terms of getting these as a tiny house in your backyard, like Oregon is trying to get more tiny houses, mm -hmm. there is process. You have to go through process in order to do that. That's true. Um, my understanding is that the smaller ones under 200 square feet often don't require a permit, but um, it varies and, and larger ones. Uh, we provide engineered blueprints, flame retardant certificates. Uh, you can get an engineered stamp uh, to show that they meet structural code. So um, there's a process, and, and uh, they don't work in every situation, but uh, we have a lot of customers that use them in so many different ways and benefit from them. That's the exciting and rewarding part for us. Because you, you really do do this because you believe it's a good thing for people, huh? Well, you know? you know, I didn't want to start a business just doing the same old thing that uh, we already have. This captured my imagination early on, and it's so rewarding to get letters uh, and photos from our customers who uh, tell us how they're using the product and how it's benefited them. That's uh, what keeps, keeps us going. You couldn't, though, have dreamed that this would turn into this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you really have done a great job, and people know, I mean, 200 of them in state parks, it's like everybody drive, walk going into a state park knows what a year it is. I don't even, you know what I mean? If you had, I guess, you know, 30 years ago, people wouldn't have known what it was. And now it's, it's like, if you say I stayed in a yurt in Oregon, if you live in Oregon and somebody says I've stayed in a yurt, you know what the hell they're talking about. I think most people do. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the smaller one we're in right now. Uh, here at our campus, we have a 20 footer and a 24. So we got, let's go. You guys, yeah. we got time. Let's take you to another one. Help. Oh, come on. Quick look in here. Honey, go look in that one. That's really cool, too. Yeah, this is our 20 foot model. This is very popular. The larger sizes tend to be the most popular. And this one has a little uh, stove over here. You know, Alan, you are 100% right. He said when we were talking to him earlier that when you come into these, it feels open. That's the thing sometimes about a tiny house that doesn't feel, it feels closed down. But this feels really super. This is our new line of doors we're pretty excited about. These are um, no maintenance, low maintenance fiberglass doors. And basically, look at that. They yeah. just open up. You know what's also kind of cool about it is you feel like, I, I do feel that camping or that it's kind of that outdoorsy feel. Absolutely. But, so you don't feel like you're living in a house. You feel like you're living amongst nature well i guess your sign says that you're living in nature well closer to nature a lot of people like that experience oh, 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 but they is, don't <laughs> this is so awesome honey you got to see this one check this out guys look at that oh man look at that so you got a wet bar over here you got this nice canopy bed here oh this is just beautiful look at that 
So is this, do you set this? And then look, here's your bathroom back here. Oh my gosh. Look at that. And it is all open up in here. Wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Love the decor, somebody says. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Somebody's talking about, yeah. That, that is just so cool. So who would, where would this go? It doesn't have a shower. So this wouldn't be something you'd live in? Be a half bath. This is kind of a mock-up of a bed and breakfast type So an Airbnb or something like yeah. that if you had something like that. God, honey, wouldn't this be fun to stay in something like that? Yeah. It's, Plus, I, you hear I, stuff. You hear, like, the outdoors. It's not like you're that's right. inside a house. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, right now you can see the car, hear the cars, but out in the country you're going to hear the birds tweeting and the rain, uh, right. the, you know, the, the wind, the river. I mean, it, that's... You, that's the nice, you're close to nature, but you're protected and you're comfortable. And some of our customers back east they were telling me the other day that they bought a yurt to live in while they built their home. They finished the home and then they rented out their yurt as an Airbnb. Then they're getting more now because it's booked up full time. And they went into sort of the Airbnb management mode, even though they were both retired because they've done so well. Anything else we need to talk about that we've forgotten? Uh, not sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think Alan and I got that in there. I think you covered it. And we've got on there, you guys, the website's up on top there, and all you got to do is get a hold of their uh, their folks, and you can go on their line, and you can look at stuff, and they can talk you through the process of how it works. So Absolutely. if you order one today, how long would it take to get it? Well, this is our busy season, so we're looking at, what, eight, ten weeks now? I think we're about ten or twelve weeks. Yeah. We do have some quick ship, quick ship models they're called in stock, and for a lot of the campgrounds, who are starting up, sometimes they need something quick. And uh, we have a few models like that available. And you're shipping them all over the world? Well, yep, absolutely. Even okay. Mongolia. Even Mongolia. Mm -hmm. They sent them. How's that? You start in Mongolia, and now you're shipping them back to Mongolia. I know. That's kind of cool. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for bringing us in. Pete, thank, thank you for your you, help. Okay. Thanks, Honey, I think we need Appreciate one of these. I think, we I need... think we do, too. <laughs> <laughs> I could live like that. All you have to do is step inside of one of these, and you are amazed. I'm just like, this is awesome. This is the best of the best. Yeah, I'd rather stay in this than a hotel room or someone's house, <laughs> and especially in a, a room off of someone's house. This would be so nice. It's got a nice, spacious feeling. It's it? got a it really does. great feeling. All right, you guys, where are we going next, hon? You're asking me? Well, we're going somewhere. I think we're going to the bike trail, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we're going right. out to meet at the bike trail out at Mosby Creek and show you this cool rail line no, that they made. No, that's not where we're going. That's not where we're going? That's well, you know what? Fun. You'll just have to stay with us and find out because we don't remember. <laughs> we're having too much fun looking at the yurts. Um, so we'll be back in a little bit whenever we get to our next location. Okay. All right, you guys. Say bye. Bye-bye.